Hey, what is up guys? Welcome to a video on Occlusion Calling. Now, Occlusion Calling is something that is fairly easy to do on Unity. Everything is like super, um, super easy for us to do. It's a really complex mechanic though, how it works in the back end. However, we don't really need to get into that too, too much. We're only going to be talking at how we actually make it work and actually what it does. So let's have an example right here. This is my camera, um, just moving around in the scene. If you have a look at the scene view, we have object appearing and disappearing. But on the right hand side, this is my normal scene and we never really see that happening. And that is because occlusion cooling is the act of not rendering what you don't see. That, that might sound really obvious, but um, usually what we have going on is what we call frost ram cooling, which means everything that is inside of the field of view of the camera is being rendered. That also includes object that are behind other objects. So you're stuck inside of a house and all you're seeing is four walls. You're still rendering what's behind the four walls. You're still rendering what's going on outside. But then occlusion calling uh, actually changes that. So objects you don't actually see because there's something in front of them, you don't actually render them. Let's have an example right here with this high wall I put a little bit earlier. We're gonna get closer to that high wall and as you can tell, we're not really rendering anything behind it. That's our whole scene because that's really all we see. Now let's have a look at the performance of that. As you can tell over here, we're rendering 2.3K triangle. Now if I just go on my main camera and toggle off the occlusion cooling, move it up just a little bit, we're now rendering 73,000 instead. So as you can tell, we can save quite a lot of process memory with that. And guys, without further ado, let's get right into it. Alright, so let's jump right into it, and uh, as you can tell right now, I have something working, I have just some uh, character walking around, running around, and um, what I've did though, is I pulled the stat window, the one you can see at the very top here, and we're just going to be comparing a few little stats from um, before calling and after calling. So, something you must notice that, um, well, something that you probably noticed already, is that when your camera is not seeing an object when your camera say it's behind a camera when the camera doesn't see that object it's actually not being rendered and uh, the way I can actually prove this is if you check out over here the amount of triangle is at 81.8k now if I move this in front it changes because this is an object and now it sees it so it renders it now uh, this is called frost jump cooling which means Anything that the camera does not see, that is not in the, the little, uh, you see the lines here, that is not inside of the field of view of that, is not being rendered. So right now we see this in the scene view and that's totally normal because we're looking at it with our scene camera, which is another thing by the way. We have a scene camera looking at the scene and we have the game camera looking at the game. Now in the game, this data down here um, behind the camera is not being rendered. It's not being like... There's no texture being applied to that, there's nothing going on with that. It's just data floating. And now of course if we pull our camera to see it, it is now being rendered if I just move say around here. But when I'm looking here, none of that is actually being rendered. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to position my camera right around here while the game is not playing. Have a look at the game view, I'm currently at 73.2 thousand um, triangle. So uh, let's get started for occlusion cooling. It's a uh, it's really simple process to be honest, it's something really easy to do. All you're really going to be doing is uh, open up the occlusion window, so under window, you have the occlusion cooling. Now this is going to pop as um, just some unity dockable window. I like to put mine in the inspector or somewhere here, I don't, it doesn't really matter. And uh, what it asks you is, what are the filter you're going to be using? I'm going to be using all of the scene for this. And now this parameter could be changed, but I really like the default settings. I've always managed to get some awesome result by just having the default settings, and that's what they tell you here as well. And under visualization, uh, you're going to be able to see that once you bake it. So all you really get to do at this point is uh, make sure that most of your objects are static. So all of my objects right here are my static objects, the things that are not moving, they're all tagged as static. If you have a look over here, this is a static object change the children, and everything that does not move in my scene, so like no moving platform, no animated um, cube that floats from left to right, this is never going to be occluded because we're doing it, uh, we're baking occlusion, so it has to be done only with static object, it's not doing it while the game is actually running, um, everything is already predefined. 
So what you're going to be doing really is uh, put everything under static and once it's done you go under occlusion and you bake. Now this is um, some really weird result you're going to get but um, as you can tell it actually works. Right now I'm under visualize that's why I see my scene being occluded. My, all my stuff is still there it's just because my camera is only able to see these right now. So if we have a look at the stats I'm right now I'm at 3.8 triangle uh, and I think we had something like 70,000. If we just move that camera around you're gonna see that things start popping up a little bit because we're able to see more and if you have a look at the game view nothing changes here you don't even see what's going on if we turn off the stats in the gizmo it's still the same scene you never actually see any artifact well sometimes you could be seeing like an object popping because the uh, the volume was not set and uh, the baking was a little bit wrong like right here but that's because I'm inside of an object and right now this this should not be happening at all in the first place so if you manage to keep your camera outside of uh, the walls then you should be fine with that but as you can tell we're only seeing object that we should be able to see and it does greatly improve the performance of your game as you can tell by the amount of triangle we saved so that is pretty much how you do occlusion cooling. It's like it's really really simple and you need you just put all the static object on static and you bake it. And you also have a lot of things to look at like visibility line which are quite cool. Gives you a better view on what's going on. You also have the portals which I'm not quite sure what they're for. I'm not really an occlusion expert. I've just been reading on the topic a little bit. Um, what, what I really like about this is that I didn't really need to know a lot. I know what occlusion cooling is. Uh, in terms of theory but I don't really know all the maths behind it and how it does it because unity is super cool and like all the default settings I've put they work super good for me I didn't see any artifact uh, in my game unless of course my my camera is inside of a wall which it should not be and um, I do have something in my camera that does not really allow that some kind of uh, collision check so it doesn't go through walls or collider and uh, that's that's pretty much about it guys um, it saves a lot of process if you have a maze game and you're always rendering what's inside of the field of view of the camera if you just turn around towards the center you might be rendering say a hundred fifty thousand polygon just and you don't even see them all you see is like a simple wall a simple um, two triangle wall but then there's like a hundred thousand other polygon being rendered in the background so this is a step I like to do at the very end of my game because I know on my PC I can handle it quite fine even um, when developing but when you're pushing sometimes you're pushing to lower end PC you're pushing to PC to have more trouble rendering all of those graphics so definitely think about that before you actually go ahead and just publish your game it's a small optimization you have a little risk of artifact like I said but still it's worth just taking that risk because you're saving so much on performance and your game can run so much more smoothly. But yeah guys, so uh, thanks a lot for watching, I hope you enjoyed this and if you like, please leave a like. If you have any comment or question, please leave them in the comment section below. I'd like to actually know your question about that and uh, it's gonna force me to google some stuff about it and we can, we can keep the conversation going on down there. So guys, thanks for watching, I will see you in the next one.